Hey guys, what's up? It's Bruce. So you may remember my good friend Ollie. He's been in some of my other videos. Uh, he's a super like chilled out person, but he can also be a little bit competitive. He created this loop in Solitorn, this pretty big loop. It takes about an hour to complete. He and I have had kind of like a challenge to see who can get the best time on this loop, which is, he's been doing this loop for probably like 10 years. I have no idea how long, but a long time. It takes about an hour to finish, and so far I haven't been able to beat his time. So, this video I'm going to walk you through my attempt, and uh, let's get started right now. Round one. Fight! So here we go, we just got started. The bridge, right under that bridge is the starting point, and you need to be going at least like 30 kilometers an hour to get started. You can see the profile here. Um, we're starting at the upper right and it's going in a counterclockwise you know, direction. And as you can see the first half of it going all the way out, all the way west, is totally flat. And on the way back it's quite hilly. So on the way out you need to average like 30 kilometers an hour. And if you can do that then you're at a pretty good pace. Of course there are some turns like this one right here where you do have to slow down quite a bit under that speed. But then there's other parts that are very flat and straight and you can go a bit above. Also you have to watch out for people and other cyclists that always tends to slow you down here and there. But right now I'm on just a typical part of the, uh, the course. It's just like a gravel, nice gravel straight away. You can, as you can see I'm averaging 32 kilometers an hour right here. And by the way, I knew today was going to be a really tough day because it was actually, there was actually a headwind going out on the flat section, which is exactly what you don't want. You want, the, if anything, to be a tailwind going out on the flat section and then taking a headwind on the climbs and the descents, the more hilly section on the back. But I did have my Garmin Edge 1000 computer on me, so I knew what my speed was at any given time. And so I was just making sure it stayed a little bit above that 30 km an hour mark, which was pretty hard to do with that, with that headwind. To the left here is a river, that's actually the Ara, and you can see quite a few bikes and people kind of parked alongside, people are swimming in the water, people are just relaxing, doing barbecue, all kinds of stuff like that. It's really a beautiful region of the country with the river right there and just like the summertime is just so cool. People are just like in a good mood and relaxing over by the water. But not me, I'm in pain right now, you know, I'm pushing pretty hard to keep it above 30 kilometers an hour. At this point, I'm just kind of like thinking, man, I don't know if I can do this. I'm starting to feel the pain already at my heart rate of 174. I don't know about the zones. I need to learn that one day, but my max I've ever seen like this year in 2019 was 191. So 172 is getting up there. Maybe that's like zone four. I'm not really sure. If you look in the upper right hand corner, there's kind of a, a graphic, a very basic graphic of the map. And you can see I started like kind of in the upper right hand area of that map and now I'm on a real long straightaway. I mean, it's not totally straight, but it's for the most part straight. This is really great gravel though. For the most part, it's pretty smooth. I mean, you can see right there, there are some pebbles and, and roll, um, kind of marbly stuff, but for the most part, it's very smooth. And if you're wondering, this bicycle I'm riding is my uh, mountain bike to road bike conversion. It's totally a road bike, as you know, obviously you can see in the, in the video, drop bars. Uh, totally slick tires, no grip, no grips or anything like that whatsoever. So it's totally a road bike, but um, it really does pretty good on this course, I think. I, I, maybe a gravel bike would be a bit better for the second half coming back with the hills, because some of that gets even more rough and there's even some off-road sections. But all the way out to Grinkin, which is the, the first half heading out towards the west, that is uh, perfectly fine with these smooth uh, tires. I think I have them pumped up to around 80, 85 PSI. They're 25, by the way, 25 millimeter wide. Off to the right there, you can see that mountain range. That's a Yura Mountain. That's the one that I do most of my riding in because it's pretty near my house. Um, but I remember at this point just being like, man, I am working too hard to be this uh, early in the ride. <laughs> at this point, I'm kind of like having regrets about even doing it. But the funny thing is, me sitting here right now, narrating this, I'm thinking like, man, I want to be out there right now and, and riding this again. I'm pretty sure I can do a better time. It looks really stable and easy on the video, but I remember being in a lot of pain at this point. Like, this was hard. I, I know a lot of people watching are just kind of like, oh man, 30 kilometers an hour, that's just nothing. That's cruising. Oh, and here I had to make a choice to go to the left of that tractor instead of 
trying to go in front of them and kind of getting everybody confused. So I didn't want to slow down, so I just went around them on the left, kind of through that that business uh, parking area. Yeah, I know a lot of, and here here we're actually going up slightly. This is a slight, 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 slight hill right there, and that's why my speed dropped down a little bit. Anyway, what I was saying is, I know a lot of people are probably like, man, 30 kilometers an hour, I can ride that all day, but. I don't know, you know, that's not super easy for me. I'm not a big guy, so speed isn't really my uh, my best attribute. I'm more of a climber, if anything. And I did have a headwind. Let me think. Any other vegetarian excuses I can think of? <laughs> not really, but no, I don't know what it is. I mean, for me, honestly, just holding it 30 kilometers an hour, 30, 30 to 35, even on a good, you know, flat, no wind situation, that's that's pretty hard. And I can see that I'm working hard because my beats per minute are at 174, so that's a, you know, it's hard work. It's not like it's, I'm going to blow up, but it's not easy either. At this point in time in the ride, I was still pretty happy. I was like, okay, I'm doing good. Yes, I'm hurting a lot, but I'm maintaining my speed. My heart rate is stabilized. Everything looks okay. So I was kind of happy at this point. Back with my hands on the hoods which is a bit more comfortable, but slightly less aerodynamic. I have these bars pretty low though. The, um, they're, the bottom of the, of the drops aren't that much higher than the top of the wheel. So it's a pretty aggressive uh, setup. Now here I'm slowing down quite a bit because I got to take a left and I got to look for cars. By the way, most of this course is pretty safe. Like most of it isn't with too much traffic at all and there's only like one roundabout and the rest of it is just uh, you know you're free to go there's no uh, lights or intersections with lights okay still doing good here actually my heart rate is lowered by quite a bit I think now I don't have the wind against me because I'm heading in more of like a southerly direction uh, and, the wind, and the wind is coming more from the west no more wind also protected by those trees on my right you do have to be a little bit careful around here because there is traffic there is people walking around but um, it's, the roads are fairly wide, so you can maintain pretty decent speed. At some point around here, oh, here's a, a car actually. And the bad thing about that is you just get all this dust in your face, but it's not that big of a deal. Okay, so one other thing I forgot to mention is um, I'm using my Garmin Edge 1000 and I'm using it synced with, uh, I synced it with Strava, so I have my Strava loop in here. So it'll tell me how many seconds I am behind or ahead of my previous best, which is a super uh, good aid. And so most of this whole way out to Grinton, I got no more than like 10 seconds behind my previous best. And uh, at this point, I was probably very close to being the same as my best. So I, I was trying to keep up with my virtual self, my prior best, and I was doing a pretty good job of it. But somewhere around here, I'm not sure where, uh, towards the end before turning back on the other direction, it told me like I was I got off course I was lost and I wasn't I was actually on the right course I know it because I know this course well enough but at least this side of it and I know it because I was looking at the map and but anyway it said I was off course and so it like knocked me out of that mode where I was competing with myself so at that point in time whenever it was around here I didn't know if I was ahead or behind my prior self believe it or not that combined with just being like super fatigued for holding on for like what 18 minutes on this ride um, it started to break my willingness to keep pushing um, and so this was where my ride started falling apart a little bit I it said that I was off course so now I didn't have my pacer anymore so I just had no idea basically I knew what the overall time I was trying to reach was but I didn't know how I was it was a whole hour so I don't know how I'm doing inside of that hour like am I making a good time or am I making a bad time I didn't know so yeah at this point I was starting to get like not exactly upset but discouraged and my willingness to keep pushing was starting to get eroded I have to take these turns here pretty slow because otherwise I can wipe out with these 100% uh, slick tires that's the only disadvantage I mean you can go on the straights on the gravel just fine but when you start hitting the corners you really got to slow down compared to like on your mountain bike and by the way, my friend Ollie, his best time on this loop was with the mountain bike. You'll see on the way back why, why, excuse me, you'll see on the way back why the mountain bike can be an advantage. Okay, at this point, my spirits are really getting crushed. My speed has gotten a lot lower on average, as you can see. 
um, and I'm guessing yeah, I felt tired but I look at my beats per minute on my heart and it's not that high so I'm guessing that I'm starting to kind of give up a little bit somehow some way it's hard to describe I'm I'm starting to check out of this uh, challenge at this point I'm imagining that I'm like one minute down at this point and for me if I don't beat my old time then I don't care you know and if I don't beat always time then I don't care so being one minute down or two minutes down or five minutes down that's just not gonna work for me so at this point I'm getting really discouraged I feel like I'm too tired for being uh, down okay so now we're getting close to where the turnaround point is now up here uh, this is why you have to go slow around the corners and be cautious on the corners I could have dove in there of course but nope whoa car coming and with these slick tires I don't have a lot of grip and a lot of ability to be you know making maneuvers to try to avoid cars I basically just have to stay on whatever path I pick so that's why some of these corners you're, you might be watching and thinking man you're taking them pretty slow but it's because there could be people other bikes other cars I can't just um, you know cut into these corners really hard and sharp and expect to be able to uh, maneuver out of the way if somebody else is coming so I have to take like that corner nice and wide and rather slow okay here we're going up the you know a little bit this is this is where the climbing and the I, don't, I hesitate to call it technical bit but yeah a little bit more technical on this side a little bit more going through the uh, villages and so forth but right here we have a gentle climb I don't know the percent it's not much one two percent something like that you can see my speed is slowed down a lot down to 17 kilometers an hour we're about to hit this roundabout which, which I'm gonna be taking a left at okay now we basically turned around now we're heading back east back towards Solitorn so it's kind of the halfway mark of the of the ride all right so we're taking a right here and this is where the hill is going to start I actually do have a Strava segment um, starting right here I think I'm the one who created it so uh, I can flash that up on the screen if I if I can I should be able to and you can see the uh, um, details of this little climb still like I was saying I was giving this a little bit of a shot but it wasn't I don't know I just didn't have the will in me this day to give it a hundred percent I was probably doing like 90 95 percent effort I see my heart rate to 179 so I, I was pretty fatigued I guess speed is slowing down a lot you can see by sometimes the bike is uh, wagging back and forth of course that means I'm out of the saddle I don't think I ever had to put it in the granny gear. This this uh, bike has a three by system, so we have three gears in the front. It's a mountain bike uh, drivetrain, pretty much. And um, yeah, so I do have a granny gear, but I don't think I ever have to use it on this course. This little uh, hill here just gets steeper and steeper as you go. It starts off pretty gradual, then it gets. Uh, you'll see in a minute towards the end, it gets. It's pretty darn steep. I don't know how steep. But I'm going 10 kilometers an hour, 9 kilometers an hour. Again, I'm not giving it 100% here. I don't think I was trying to kind of pace myself because I know this actually is a hard climb. It's not long, but it's pretty tough. Every time it's pretty tough, and I do have to pace myself because uh, if you go too hard, at least if I go too hard in my fitness, uh, I can blow myself up, and then it gets extremely hard to finish this climb. Okay, I'm going to fast forward a little bit because this is kind of boring. Okay, here's where things were getting really, really hard. This is where, I mean, my heart rate isn't super high, but I don't know what it is, but right here, I was really starting to suffer. I was about to be cooked. This is where I was starting to see red. Things were getting pretty dang tough here. And the thing is, I know there's a sharp uphill gravel section right here. When I got to that gravel section, I was like, there is no way I'm gonna be able to ride up this more than a couple meters. But I'll just keep I'll just keep on my bike as long as I can. I was surprised how far I could make it, how fatigued I was, and just how bad and gnarly that grass and that gravel looked. I was like, I'm not gonna make it nowhere. But I actually made it pretty far. Now on my mountain bike, I can make it all the way up here. Not easily, I won't say, because when this little corner starts, it gets even steeper, it gets very steep, and you have to have the energy to really stand up on your bike and kind of power up that few meter section. But here I was like, forget about it. My tires started slipping as it got steeper and grassier. So I jumped off the bike and started walking, and not only walking, but like walking slowly, kind of trying to recover, I guess. I just had nothing else in me to like run or no more 
ability that day to like run up here like I would like to watching it I'm thinking like man why don't you just like dash up that little section but at the time no way I was just like just trying to keep myself <laughs> together you know like keep walking keep one foot going after the other this part is probably the most painful part of the entire course in my opinion coming up this section right here I'm so beat from that that last part of the effort it's difficult to will myself to shift up to those harder gears and actually start pedaling more or less right here we're only a few percent grade but I'm just like I'm just soft pedaling just to recover a little bit now it actually jumps onto this like thin little asphalt strip or it's actually cement I think these, these two cement strips uh, I always put my wheel or put myself on that uh, but at this corner here gets like covered in gravel and it's like super loose so I got to take that really easy the bike is always like shifting itself all around So physically I've recovered a lot here, I'm doing pretty fine, but mentally I'm just like, I'm over it. Basically at this point I was like, I know, I've gone too slow too much, there's no way that I'm close to my old previous best. That's what I convinced myself. So I said, okay, at this point I'm just going to ride, you know, at a good pace, but not a, uh, at a competitive pace. Here's another part where you have to get out, out onto the street, and that's a little bit unusual, that car just pulling in like that, that kind of surprised me. So we have to get onto the main a big street with the cars going pretty fast here. Uh, I mean, there's not a lot of traffic, but if there is, so you have to slow down a lot and you know, look for the cars. But we're only on this section for just a few seconds, and then we're going to jump off to the right back into the forest, which is uh, coming up right here. Um, it was actually a little bit hard to find this time because it was so overgrown. So I was like slowing down looking like, where is the entry to this trail? But I finally found it right there. And as you can see, it's pretty overgrown. It'll get worse here in a second. And this really stinks because there's like these, I don't know, poisonous little sharp things <laughs> that are like scratching up my legs and stuff. But no problem. It's pretty rooty up through here with these trees. But it's no big deal. I mean, it can't go very fast. At least I can't go very fast on my road bike through here. But as long as I can just kind of roll through it, that's all I'm asking of myself. And that's basically, I think, the worst part. Now we're back on a gravel road inside the forest. And here is some kind of giant forest tractor. So I was like hoping I could move over enough for that guy. Because that thing was like huge, occupying the entire trail. That slowed me down a little bit, as you can see. So then it's, it is going uphill, so I have to like then accelerate again, going uphill. But now we're getting out of the forest, getting ready to go again uphill. Not super, super steep, but still up on the gravel. Uh, but I know the course well enough that this is only going to last for a few you know, moments, and then we're going to get to go down again. Okay, now that's the peak. Now we're going to roll down some. But I have to be careful here because I remember the t not this time in this video, but the last time I was here, there was like some construction on the road. And so there are these giant like um, channels that they cut in the road that almost wiped me out last time. I was super close to wiping out last time I, I rode through here. So this time I was taking it extra easy because I didn't, I couldn't remember exactly where that construction was. I was thinking it was like right outside this, this tree line, but I wasn't sure. Now here you could go really fast if you wanted, but again, you have to watch out for cars and stuff like that. So you can't just go crazy. You know, I'm riding the brakes here, kind of pulsing the brakes, trying to keep the speed modulated. I think I saw like 40 something kilometers an hour. Yeah, but there's like tractors everywhere. There's kids playing, there's cars pulling in and out sometimes. So you gotta be careful on this part. Okay, so now we're in the village, and basically the rest of this section on the way back is going to look a lot like what this looks like here. Kind of cut going into one village, going out of another village, going up a little bit of a hill, going down a little bit of a hill. Again, like I said, now I'm not really competing anymore. I'm just riding along, just trying to enjoy the ride, keeping a decent pace. So I guess what I thought is, even though I know I'm not going to win, at least I might as well get a decent workout out of this. So I was trying to keep a decent pace, nothing crazy, but... Okay, and here comes the second off-road section. So there's basically two off-road sections. 
um, in this course, meaning like really off-road on trails, single track. And here it starts. It's not a hard one and it's certainly not a long one, uh, but it was quite overgrown once again. So I was getting a lot of sharp crap uh, cutting my legs, which was annoying, and hands even. And I was also afraid I would get a puncture and I forgot to bring a spare tire or inner tube. So I was like really hoping I didn't get a puncture here. I'm pretty lucky about punctures. I don't know why I don't get that many, maybe because I'm not that heavy, but um, yeah, got through that okay. Just, I was just trying to get through it. I wasn't even consider, considering my, excuse me, I wasn't even concerning myself at all with the speed, just, just to roll through that little section. Now I'm back on the gravel. The ride is almost over now, as you can see in the upper right hand corner. So here we go, going down the final hill, getting off the final bit of gravel. Now I'm back on the, on the asphalt. This is a pretty sharp and short descent. Not right at this part, but coming up soon. So uh, I have gone super fast, like just blazed through this section, but I also, also have almost wiped out quite a few times. And that was like even on my mountain bike, which I'm much more confident in when descending on something like this. So I was taking it super easy on the road bike. I couldn't remember where the sharp left hand corner was, whether it was like right after this tunnel or like where it was. But I remember there was like a super sharp uh, not right, but left hand corner and here it is. It doesn't look that bad, but if you're bombing down that at like 40, 30 kilometers an hour, that can be a pretty sharp turn. But yeah, at that speed it was no problem. I was able to uh, just go through there. And now we're at the last 100 meters. We're almost at the finish. Actually, to be honest, I don't remember exactly where the finish is, but it's right around here, I think. I basically made my finish uh, where you have enough room to slow down before this intersection. So that's it. That's the ride. Um, if you're curious about my time, it was actually very close to my prior best time. Still not what I'm looking for. I'm looking to like crush it by like four or five minutes. But it was only like, I think 45 seconds or 50 seconds slower than my prior best. That totally shocked me when I went back to the computer and looked at it. And what my lesson from all this is, is you shouldn't give up just because you think you might be going slower because it turned out if I would have just put a little bit more effort in it I would at least got a personal best wouldn't have been a lot to show off to my friend that I crushed him and I totally beat him but it would have been at least like a PR um a PB excuse me it would have at least been a PB but uh, I didn't do that I took it easy on the second half basically and I didn't get anything so uh, looks like I have to go out there again try again I don't know what I'm going to do differently I think I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm just not going to give up. Anyway, that's about it. I'm just rambling now. I'm going to go out there and do it again. And uh, I'll, maybe I'll record it too and bring you guys along. If I get like a lot of um, positive feedback from this video, then I'll go ahead and do another video uh, doing the same thing. And hopefully me actually conquering this loop and crushing my friend. So <laughs> anyhow, thanks for watching. Um, Oh, by the way, I am starting to link a lot of my other stuff down in the description, so go ahead and check that out. I have like Instagram, I opened up a Facebook page, so that's you know another way if you like to get notifications that way. So I have like all kinds of stuff, go check it out in the description. Um, that's about it. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye. <laughs>